In our software development paradigm, we are going to discuss another model that is known as the spiral model. So now let us discuss this spiral model. What is a spiral model? We shall discuss it with a proper diagram. Then we shall discuss the strengths and weaknesses and where to use or when to use this spiral model. So look at this very diagram. Here you can find that this particular software development process has got initiated. We are having risk management, prototypes, design, code, integration, test and implementation. So this section we are considering under product development. And now one release will be obtained to the client so that client can use it. And here you see we are having the next phase planning. And then we are going for the review, then objective identification, then cumulative cost. Again the progress will be initiated and then alternate evaluation will be done. And then again we are going for this product development phases. So in this way the spiral model will work and you can particularly look at this particular figure and you can find that this risk management is taken care of in case of spiral model. So that is the uniqueness in spiral model. So spiral model is a combination of both iterative model and one of the SDLC model and this is the iterative model means it will go on doing in iteration, iteration means looping and one of the SDLC model. So it can be seen as if you choose one SDLC model and combine it with cyclic process that is an iterative model in this case. So here you are selecting one of the SDLC models and the iterative model. So these two models are getting combined to give you the shape of this spiral model. Now in this respective slide, we are mentioning that very vital point that this model considers risk and which often goes unnoticed by most of the other models. This model starts with determining the objectives and the constraints of the software at the start of the, of the iteration. And next phase is to prototyping the software and this includes risk analysis. So then one standard SDLC model is used to build the software in the fourth phase of the plan of the next iteration is prepared. So as we have mentioned here, so here we are having one, two, three, four different phases are there. And here this, this is the software or the product development phase, which is having one of the SDLC lifecycle model can be implemented here for design, coding, integration, testing and implementation. Then release will be obtained. And this process is iterative because it will go on looping, iteration means looping and here we are having the next planning and then the objective will be identified and the cumulative cost and the progress will be obtained and again the process will be repeated. So now let us go for the strengths, drawbacks and the where to use, when to use this spiral model. So we are discussing spiral model strengths. So what is developed at first, if it is a question then obviously our answer should be that critical high risk functions are to be developed at first. Why? Because if you can, if you can develop the high risk uh, components at first, so what will happen as we are implementing the high risk components or the functions at first, then what will happen if there is some failure in the development, then that will be a less costly affairs for us. So this model provides early indication of existence of risks without much cost how does the user benefit? So answer is users can be closely tied to all the life cycle steps. Users see the system early because of rapid prototyping tools and early and frequent feedback from the users will enrich this development process to get lead to the actual development according to the requirements and expectation of the customers. Now we are discussing spiral model weaknesses. What is the impact of using spiral model for small or low risk projects? Time spent for evaluating risks too large for small or low risk projects. So time spent planning, resetting objectives, doing risk analysis and prototyping may be ex excessive. So that these are the disadvantages and drawbacks of this spiral model. So judging the 
risk analysis, doing the risk analysis and finding the most risky model which is to be implemented at first and also doing the prototyping will be the excessive extra work for us. So can spiral model be considered simple? If it is a question, the answer is the model is complex and expertise is required in which area? The answer is risk assessment expertise is highly required in the proper implementation of the spiral model. So in this discussion, we have discussed lots of issues on the spiral model with a proper diagram. Thanks for watching this video. Tutorialspoint.com. Simply easy learning.